Installing NixOS is easy, but that statement is unfortunately not always true when it comes to deploying it to remote machines or VPS services, especially when most of them don't even provide it as an option by default. And so today's tool, NixOS Anywhere, aims to solve this issue by allowing you to, as the name suggests, install NixOS Anywhere. It is also very straightforward to set up and use, so without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. The general idea is that it allows you to connect to an existing Linux installation on any machine using SSH and then boot into a NixOS installer to automatically override it with NixOS. The partitioning part also happens completely automatically using NixDisco, meaning all it takes is one NixOS configuration and one simple command to install NixOS anywhere you want. And now to demonstrate how it works, let's try to install NixOS on a remote virtual private server. So here, I have an existing Ubuntu installation on a remote VPS, and what we need to do first is check its IP address using the IPA command, and identify the primary drive with the lsblk command. For now, write both of these down, as we are going to need them later. Next, we need to prepare a NixOS configuration that we are going to use, and unless you already have one, you can start with one of the templates from the NixOS Anywhere examples GitHub repo. In its flag.nix, it includes configurations for Hetzner Cloud, DigitalOcean, and a generic setup that should work for most installations, each accompanied by a NixOS generate command for remote installation. I will use this one today, but before we can run the command, there are still a few things we need to tweak in the modules. This general example imports the disco module needed to format our file system declaratively, a good old configuration.nix module, and a hardware configuration.nix. Let's first check the configuration.nix, and as you can see, it could not have been less complicated. Here, aside from some usual options that set up the bootloader, install some useful packages and enable SSH, we also have several imported modules. With the first one being a module that enables non-free firmware that you may need, the second one being a module that provides common configuration for QEMU virtual machines, and the third one being a configuration module for Nix Disco. Let's check it out, and here, we have a file that may look daunting at first, but don't worry, because all it does is partition our disk with a regular ext4 file system and a 500MB boot partition. Meaning all we have to change here is this one option that specifies the disk name for the installation, mine was called slash dev slash sda, but yours may be different. And if you don't want to use ext4 at all, you can also completely rewrite this file to suit your requirements. The Nix Disco repository provides a ton of example file system configurations, ranging from simple setups like this one to more complex modules with RAID and encryption. Afterwards, we can simply return to our configuration.nix. And now comes a very important step, which is adding our public SSH key to the authorized keys option for the root user. This will actually allow us to log into the machine after the installation is complete, because otherwise you'll probably lose access to it. Now is also the perfect time to include any other options you may need, so feel free to add any extra packages, users, set the initial or hashed passwords and enable some services, though you will of course be able to change anything later. Now let's return to our flag, and the only module we haven't discussed yet is the hardware configuration.nix. You probably already know that this module can vary greatly between machines, which is exactly why during a standard NixOS installation it is generated automatically based on your machine's hardware. So the question is, how can NixOS Anywhere handle this variability and ensure compatibility with any machine it installs on? Well, the answer is very simple, it also generates it automatically using this generate hardware config flag. It takes a command that will be used to generate the hardware configuration.nix, and as you can see in this case, we are using a basic NixOS generate config command, which is also the one you would usually use during a normal NixOS installation. When we eventually run the NixOS Anywhere command, the modifications done by this command will affect our local configuration, meaning if your hardware configuration is imported in a different place or has a different name, you can simply change it here in the command. And just to be sure, the initial hardware configuration that comes with this repo simply contains a throw expression by default, which will trigger an error if this file fails to generate. Now that we know what our files do, let's finally talk about the command itself. And the only thing we have to change here is of course the address of the remote machine in regular SSH format. The NixOS Anywhere command itself is available in Nix packages under the same name, so I also recommend wrapping this command with nix run so you don't have to install it. 
Now simply run the command, type in your remote password, say bye bye to whatever is installed or not installed on the remote machine, sit back and relax, everything else will be handled automatically. And after the installation is finished, you will have a ready configuration that you can use to install NixOS however many thousands of times on however many machines you happen to manage. But note that NixOS Anywhere's intended use is only installing NixOS, so if you want to then update your machine, you can use NixOS Rebuild or Deploy RS, a video about which is also coming soon. And like I've said in the beginning, it is also possible to use NixOS Anywhere to install NixOS on machines with no current operating system installed, and the process for it is pretty much the same, except instead of SSHing into an installed distro, you will need to SSH into a NixOS installer. And now, I want to take a moment to thank all the incredible people who support the channel and make all of this possible, especially all the great monthly members, of which we have one new member, so thanks RifterZC for signing up. Your support means a lot to me. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.